Hello! Today I'm taking a look at the amorous sharpshooter and final orphan of the Final Fantasy VIII party, Irvin Kinius. Now, Irvine is a funny one, as he tends to divide fans down the middle for the lascivious buffoonery that he's introduced with. And right from the get-go, he's designed to rub Squall and Co, as well as players, the wrong way for his superficial demeanour and indecent pursuit of any female that comes his way. Indeed, Quistus is quick to give him a dressing down about his behaviour, and Squall succumbs to multiple face palms while trying to integrate and onboard Irvine to the party, and the severe tasks that await them. The Adia assassination mission is the gripping final act of Final Fantasy VIII's Disc 1, and while the party is gearing up for some decisive action, Irvine is frustratingly dividing his time between trying to play it cool and harassing his colleagues. And this set piece is a great introduction to Irving's character, because like the others that I've discussed in this series, the personality he attempts to convey early on is at complete odds with the deeper, truer character within, and the insecurities that are bound up there. So Irving's particular brand of character development is more obvious than the others, because where he's introduced as a confident, albeit emotionally vacuous idiot... At the decisive moment he's due to assassinate the sorceress, he breaks down and says that he can't do it, resulting in another facepalm from Squall, but also radically altering our perception of Irving, you know, in the process. Additionally, while he's often treated as a joke character, with others frequently undermining his facade as a cool guy, and my personal favourite, digressing slightly, is when Renoa kicks him down the stairs during his suave rescue attempt at the D-District prison, And despite this, Irving's actually pivotal in drawing the central party closer together, and it's gradually revealed, you know, that Irving is a much more inquisitive and compassionate person than we originally might have expected. His brief exchange with Squall during the assassination mission about being a loner and no one understanding him is the first genuine moment that we see from Irving, which Squall brushes off, not so much because he's uncaring, but more so because of the imminence of this one opportunity they have to assassinate the sorceress. Irvine is also responsible for the orphanage reveal at Trabia Garden, and while this sequence is reviled by many, I think it reveals a lot about Irvine, and again, you know, it hinges around this more thoughtful, compassionate side of his character, which we hadn't really realised up until this point. And as I mentioned in my long-form Final Fantasy VIII review, it's interesting to consider how Irving remembers the party and their collective childhood at the orphanage, because we could by extension safely assume that he remembers Adia as matron as well. And so his nervous breakdown during the assassination mission has a fresh poignance to it, with Irving being aware he's about to murder a mother figure, and despite this, he actually has the strength of will to go through with it and deliver what Squall says is a perfect shot, you know, which only fails, you know, owing to Adia's magical powers. So I give Irving credit for this, and while his status as a secondary character and party member means he's only fleetingly explored in the game, I think his hidden depths and growth from a self-indulgent individual who ruthlessly pursues women and attempts to flee after the failed assassination mission until Renoa makes him turn back and save everyone, and how he transitions from this to become someone who later immerses himself in the party following the basketball scene. And further evidence of this, because Final Fantasy VIII is one of these weird games that has quite hidden dialogue segments and, and character developments in places you wouldn't necessarily find them if you weren't looking. But a fun digression in Final Fantasy VIII is running around Fisherman's Horizon as Irving during the musical instrument selection minigame. And although this isn't pertinent to the story, here we can initiate some interesting conversations that shows Irving's growth. And during this segment, he states that the party are his comrades and have saved him from the loneliness of life as a sharpshooter, which is really quite an interesting, albeit hidden insight to his character here. And I think it ties him up closely with Selfie, who likewise has this alone-in-the-crowd dilemma where they have trouble emoting 
and genuinely opening up to others, despite, you know, these superficial displays of confidence. The fact Irving comes from the austere, militaristic Galbadia Garden, rather than the warm, friendly nucleus of Barlam Garden, helps cement this image and his reputation as an outsider. And owing to the comparative emotional coldness of Galbadia, where most graduates transition directly into the Galbadian military, I think it compounds Irving's need and mutual growth uh, fostered through the party, and particularly the fun-loving Selfie, who he kind of develops a close relationship with uh, throughout the game. So this has been quite an abbreviated look at Irving, despite being a character so pivotal to the party story and contradictory as a personality. But once again, his, along with most other party members, take a back seat to the primary romance and time paradox story within Final Fantasy VIII. But that said, I always really enjoyed his inclusion for both his goofiness as this lanky, somewhat klutzy guy and his awkward amorousness that echoes shades of Edgar from Final Fantasy VI. And I liked that all of this is contrasted and underpinned by a deep-seated sincerity and caring that makes Irvin ostensibly human and relatable rather than a repellent, superficial guy that we initially might think him to be. So that about wraps up my thoughts on Irving. If you enjoyed this episode, you might also enjoy my long-form Final Fantasy VIII analysis, which is available on the channel, along with some of my other character episodes. Feel free to drop a comment and start a conversation around Irving or any of the other characters or observations you like. And if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe to keep updated with my latest posts.